you so that you'll do good in life. I gave you eyes to see so that you can see the future and see the road and see where you're going, but you'll be looking at pornography. You'll be looking at things that will defy you. I gave you ears to hear. Yes, to hear things that are good, that will spoil you on, that will uh, inspire you, that you'll hear things that will drive you on to the goal of the creation. But you're using your ears for other things, and you're carrying a bloodshed and evil. I gave you fingers, I gave you hands, so that you'll be able to construct and build and do something wonderful. But you're using the hands with e for evil, and you're murdering. And then it says, your feet have run even to shed blood. Look at that verse 4. It says, none call it for justice. And uh, it says, uh, none pleaded, and none, no end, not any pleading for truth. And they trust in vanity and they speak lies and they conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. It says all their lives, they're only imagining evil and they're planning evil and they're projecting evil and they're dreaming about evil. And when they wake up, they say, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do that. And instead of doing good, they're doing evil. It says, I know all that about you. The unclean condition of the people and all the same it says with all i know i've decided that today will be a day of change in your life i've decided that today will be a day of transformation in your life that's why it says with all that knowledge about you that you have used every part of your body think about any part of your body your brain your mind your heart your knowledge your intelligence your mouth your nose your ears your eyes your hands your feet You've used everything to do evil and to defile others and to make the world more corrupt than you met the world. You say, but all the same, today is a day of your mercy. Somebody there will say, Amen. Yeah. Uh, look at verse 5. It says, They hatch cockatrice eggs and weave the spider's web, and he that eateth of their eggs dies. It says, They are poison in what they do. And the activities of their hands were poison the lives of people. Then he goes on to say, and that which is crushed breaketh into a viper. He says, he goes on in verse 7, he says, their feet run to evil. Their feet run to evil. Anywhere they hear there's fighting. Anywhere they hear that they are breaking bottles and they are knocking each other. Anywhere they hear that they are making use of the cutlass and they are destroying the lives of people, they run there. And God says, I know that's who you are. I know that's what you have done. All the same, come now. Let's change this life. Let's change this personality. Let's change this evil that you have been doing. And that change is coming tonight. I said that change is coming tonight. If you will hear the voice of the Lord, and then you say, yes, Lord, I know that's me. Yes, Lord, I know that's my life. Are you inviting me for mercy tonight? Are you inviting me for miracle tonight? Come now. Let us reason together. Let there be a deliberation between you and the Almighty God. And it says, even though you've done all this, forgiveness is available tonight. And then he's still preparing a place for you in heaven. Look at verse 7. Their feet run to evil. And they make haste to shed innocent blood. Have you, have, you, have you done that? Have you seen people either they shed blood with occultic powers or they shed blood to make rituals or to get money or whatever it is? It says, yes, I know. It doesn't mean that, you know, I said, did not know the prophet, did not know, or God did not know. It says, yes, I know. I know all that about you, and yet I'm calling you. And I'm saying, I want to do good in your life. I know the thoughts you have. I know the plans you have. I know the imaginations you have. I know the activities of your hand. I know how dirty, how defiled. I know how evil. All the same, I'm saying, come. And I will clean you up. And I will cleanse you. And I will touch your life. Now, if somebody rejects mercy like this, what remains for the person? If the God of heaven will say, I'm willing to forget the past. The God of heaven says, I'm willing to forget all the evil you have done. And today, today, I want to forgive you. I want to transform your life. I want to put you on the path of peace. If somebody rejects that, if somebody rejects mercy, and the judge says, I put off my regalia of judgment. I put off my regalia of royalty. 
Today, I put on the loving, tender clothes of a heavenly father and of a merciful father. And I want to forgive you. If somebody rejects that, angels will condemn him. If somebody rejects that, the whole world will condemn him. If somebody rejects that, even other sinners will say, if I had that opportunity, if I had the voice of the heavenly father calling me like that, I would have responded. That's why you're saying, you're making up your mind today. Yes, I will. I will come. I will arise and go to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against you and against heaven. I know I'm not worthy to be called your child, but Lord, I come and mercy is waiting for you. Somebody there said, mercy is waiting for you. Look at what I said about them in verse 7. Their feet drawn to evil. And they make haste to shed innocent blood. That their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity. Wasting, wastage, destruction are in their paths. The way of peace they have not known. The way of peace, they don't know peace. They only know how to fight. If there's no fight, they start a fight. If there's no quarreling, they start quarreling. If everything is peaceful, they say, why is everything peaceful? And they're ready to knock anything and to destroy everything around. It says the way of peace, they know not. There is no judgment. There is no justice in their goings. It says they have made themselves crooked. They make themselves crooked paths. And whosoever goes therein, shall not know peace. All the same he says, with all that, I'm still calling you. And I'm saying, come now. Is he calling you to judgment? No, not at all. Not at all. Didn't you hear what he said? He said, do your sins be as scarlet. I know your sins are as red as scarlet. I know they're deep, deeply dyed. All the same, I'll make you as white as snow. All the same, I'm going to change everything for the better in your life. Thank God. I see you there tonight. Your life is changing for the better. I see you there tonight. All your sins is going to be forgiven in Jesus' name. Isaiah tells us in chapter 28. Isaiah chapter 28. And I'm reading from verse 8. Isaiah chapter 28. And we're reading from verse 8. And look at what it says. For all tables are full of vomit. And fill the nest so that they, there is no place clean. See the people God is calling. You know, some people, religious people, they say, you know, if you're good, if you're nice, if you're not a drunkard, if you have not, if you don't smoke, if you've not done anything evil at all, if you're clean, 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 then God will love you. And then God will invite you. God says, no, I'm not inviting the people that are clean. It says, those who are whole do not need a physician. I come for the sinners. I come for the evildoers. It says, these are drunkards. It says, when they drink, they vomit. And they roll in their vomit. And they fall into the gutter. And they lie in that gutter. It says, but even though they are gutter men and gutter women, you gutter ladies, I'm still looking for them. And I'm still searching for them. And I'm calling upon the people. Come now and let us reason together. Says the Lord. Let's reason together. Do you think that's the best you can be in life? Let's reason together. Do you think that when I created you, this is all I had for you? Let us reason together. This dirty life of vomiting and rolling in that vomit. This dirty life of not having any future. Not thinking about the future. You imagine evil. You devise evil. You practice evil. You hurt other people. And there's no progress. And there's no future. Do you think that's what I created you for? Let there be deliberation. Let there be deliberation. Look at your life. And look at what you are doing. And now, let there be liberation. And tonight is the night of your liberation. In Jesus' name. He described them and he said, this is what you are doing. Okay, some of the people then said, okay, let me go out and let me go and make a change for myself. Instead of coming, instead of coming to the Lord, they say, I say, okay, you wait there. We're going to do better. And then when we clean up ourselves and we do a better thing and live a better life, then we're welcome. Isaiah chapter 64, I'm reading here from verse 6. Isaiah 
chapter 64, verse 6, but we're all as an unclean sin. We're all as an unclean sin. I'm turning over a new leaf. Uh-uh. It doesn't work. We're all as an unclean sin. I'm making resolution. Uh-uh. It doesn't work. We're all as an unclean sin. I will not go there again. I'll not turn that again. I'm going to be holy, holy, righteous by myself. It says, no, it doesn't happen that way. Only God can cleanse you. That stain of sin. That defilement of sin. And that cruelty in your life. Only the Lord can make the change. Because it says, we all are some unclean sin, and all our righteousnesses, in the plural, all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. And then it says, and we all do fade as a leaf, and no, and uh, our iniquity, like the wind, have uh, taken us away. It says, it's like a wild wind. It's uncontrollable. It's not something you can control by yourself. It is not something you can say, I'll overcome that. I'll settle that. I'll come out of that. He said, this is a tornado. And this is a great wind. There's no way you can do this by yourself. That's why he says, I will help you. And the Lord will help you. Somebody there said, the Lord will help you. How will he help you? Look at Isaiah chapter 1. Isaiah chapter 1. Look at what he says he will do. And look at what he says is going to happen. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 16. In verse 16 it says, Wash you and make you clean. Come to the blood of Jesus. Because the blood of Jesus can wash you white in the snow. It's the blood of Jesus that cleanses us from all sin. Wash you. Make you clean. Put away the evil of your doing before mine eyes and cease to do evil. It says, instead of running and running to mischief, running and running to drunkenness, and running and running to evil, iniquity, and immorality, it says, stop. Think. And look at the face of God who is willing to forgive you and turn away from that sin. What he's saying is repent of that wickedness. Repent of that evil imagination. He says, then you come, learn to do well, and seek judgment, and relieve the oppressed, and judge the fatherless. Verse 17, plead for the widows. Then in verse 18, come now. You repent, come now. You return, come now. You say, Lord, I am sorry for the things I've done. I cannot help myself. I cannot change myself. But I come. He says, come now. And let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. A change is coming. I said, a change is coming. I said, a change is coming. What is the change coming? I said, where? Where? Are you there? I can't see the person there. It's coming upon you. It change. You will not go to hell. It change. Judgment will pass over you. It change. Mercy will come to you. It change. Because the Lord is saying, now, now is the time. Come now. Let us reason together, says the Lord. Do your sins be as carnage. He says, I'm assuring you tonight by the mercy of the Lord. I'm assuring you tonight because of the Lamb of God that died for you. I'm assuring you tonight because of the grace of God and the grace that goes beyond your sin. He says, they'll be white as snow and they'll be white as wool. That brings me to second point that talks about the uncommon conversion by the Savior. Uncommon conversion by the Savior. What's conversion? When red changes to white, that's a conversion. When something dirty changes to something desirable, that's a conversion. When something unclean changes to something totally clean, perfectly clean, 100% clean, that's the conversion. When all the stains of corruption, all the stains of defilement, when the blood of Jesus washes everything, and cleanses everything. And you are as white as snow. And even when God looks at that garment of righteousness. He cannot see a stain. Angels look at that garment. They cannot see any stain. And then men, saints and sinners. They look at your garment. They cannot see any stain. That's what the Lord is talking about. A conversion. A conversion that is urgent. Because it says come now. 
that urgent miracle of conversion is waiting for you, it will be yours in Jesus' name. A conversion that is unique. A kind of conversion that will say, how could this happen? See the great thing that has happened to him, that has happened to her. She was like this before. Once I was blind, but now I can see. And you will see tonight. I said you will see tonight. The joy of salvation will come to you. A transformation and a change that the hand of the almighty God himself will perform and do. And it is tonight. It is taking place. Look at this. Because it says come. It says come. And Isaac keeps on reminding. He said, I've been calling. You have not come. Why have you not come? It says come. Isaiah chapter 55. Isaiah chapter 55. And here we're reading from verse 1. Isaiah chapter 55. And we're reading from verse 1. It says, oh, everyone that thirsteth, come. Come ye to the waters. And he that has no money, come ye and buy. And each, ye come, buy wine and milk without money. And without price. See what the Lord is saying. He's saying that you will buy. And uh, the buy here is not telling you that you buy with money. Because it says, come and buy without money. With what do you buy then? You buy it with repentance. And you buy it with faith. You say, Lord, I come just as I am. Without any excuse, I come unto you. Because you invited me. And because your mercy is inviting me. That is why I come tonight. And it says, look at verse 6. It says, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way. It says, that's how you have the forgiveness. That's how you have the conversion. That's how you have the transformation. Let the wicked forsake his way. And your righteous man is yours. And then it says, and let him, let him return unto the Lord. For he will abundantly pardon. He will pardon you. I said he will pardon you. He will have mercy upon you and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. What does that mean? Number one, he will pardon you. And then the abundance of pardon, that is the grace will stretch so far. The grace will go so high. The grace will go so broad. And the grace will go so deep. It will cover every evil thing you have done. I've never seen forgiveness like this before. I've never seen pardon like this before. I've never seen reconciliation like this before. It will look at you as if you are branch new. All sins forgiven. All iniquities taken away. And it says it's going to be an urgent cleansing. It's going to be a unique cleansing. It's going to be an uncommon cleansing. And it says, it is now. Come now. Let's deliberate. Come now. Let's discuss. Come now. Let's iron this thing out. Come now. Let the forgiveness flow into your life right now. And let us reason together, says the Lord. It says, though your sins be as courage, terrible, dirty, deep, defiling, corrupting, all the same, by the time I handle everything for you, you'll be as white as snow. Do you want that? Somebody there said, do you want that? I can't hear you. I said, do you want that? It says, he'll blot everything away. Look at Isaiah chapter 44. Isaiah chapter 44. And see what God says he will do. And see the miracle. The miracle of conversion. God says he will perform. And based on your coming and saying, Lord, I trust you. You have invited me. And you have called me. And because you have invited me. And you have called me for this. So, Lord, I come. I come. Chapter 44 of Isaiah, verse 22. I have blotted out as a thick cloud thy transgressions. Transgressions in the plural. He said, like a thick cloud, I'll take them away. Look at the promise of the Lord. And look at the mercy of the Lord. It says, as dirty as you are. And you know, if you're dirty like that, you'll not live in my palace forever. If you're dirty like that, you will not be in heaven forever. And because I want you in heaven, I want you in paradise by all means. That's why I'm calling you. And it says, I blotted out as a thick cloud, thy transgressions. And as a cloud, 
there it says, Return unto me, for I have redeemed thee, says the Lord. The Lord is saying, because of that redemption that's available. And because of that salvation that's available. That's why I'm calling you. I'm calling you and it is urgent. I'm calling you and it's unique. I'm calling you and it's uncommon. And now the question you're asking, who can come? I want to come, but am I there? 